Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorium. And Jinx here. And welcome to Planet Zoo Console Edition on the PlayStation 5. So Jinx has been waiting for this game for a very long time. We considered buying it on the PC because it did come out. It's been out for a little while on Steam. But we decided to wait for the console version. Cover it here on the channel. Haven't gotten to play all that much yet, guys. I just did a little test run just to get familiar with some of the controls, figure out how things work. It is very similar to some of their other games. These are the same developers that did the Jurassic World Evolution games, which we played both of those here on the channel. They also developed Planet Coaster, which is one we have not played on the channel. So you'll see my little character. You do get to place him on the map. You get to customize your avatar. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I don't know what the purpose of this is. I don't know if it's just like a multiplayer thing because it does say hide avatar from friends down below. So you can hide it so nobody can see what you look like, I guess. But I'm not sure what the purpose is. I don't know if you ever actually see this character in game or not. You get some options here. You can change the gender. I have noticed that the females have a lot more options in general. Maybe it has to do with the size of your character, actually. Maybe. Yeah, it might, it might have more to do with the size of the character. Because if you look at my character, it doesn't have a ton of options here. Well, when Jinx was making hers, she played as a, a thin character, and she had a lot more choices. So you just like, uh, if you look at the glasses, there's four pairs of glasses rather than two. A lot more pairs of clothes. So it seems like it's the body type that controls your options here more than anything else. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to look like. You know, this guy's way fatter than I am, but... kind of like you. Kind of. I mean... Big old belly. Yeah, and bad posture. Yeah. And, you know, I'm more muscle than I am fat. He's nowhere near as big as me. He's like, whoa, I'm big. And his beard <laughs> is not as big either. I am bald. Just like that, though. But yeah, not a lot of options here, guys. I want to show you everything this got. So here's the facial hairs. Got uh, you know, a couple of clothing options. You can change the color of a few of these. But again, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is. And now this, we, we couldn't decide if this is for you're a kid or you're just somebody short. It looks like a kid to me. Yeah, that one looks like a kid. But the one that I was messing around with, it looked like just a shorter adult. Yeah, Jinx was thinking it was short adults, but I think it's children. And that's what it looks like yeah, to me. Yeah, I guess the faces are different too. Yeah, that you're, you designing, like. you're designing a child. Anyways, let's go ahead and exit. This is going to be your avatar. Again, not entirely sure if that matters at all. But we're going to be doing the career. Just like we did with the Jurassic World Evolution series, we started with the tutorial section here. So you guys can see exactly what it has to offer. And of course, it is like a, a little bit of a story as well as you go through these. And it'll teach us how to play the game because I don't really know how to play. You know, I hopped into I just did a little sandbox mode here, a little test playthrough. And I found that uh, there's enough differences from the Jurassic World games that I was a little lost in some things. But there's a lot of similarities as well, so if you have played that, then certain aspects are going to be similar to you. Alright, so this is going to be the first scenario here. We're going to play on the medium difficulty. Let's go and hop on into it. We're going to get lions. Yeah, it seems like this one should have some lions. Yeah, it's basically Jurassic World evolution, but with the, the animals instead of the dinosaurs. Well, I guess dinosaurs are animals, but... Dinosaurs are animals, too. Ah! hey yo, at Hema, too! Yeah, I, yeah. Oh. oh. Oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of... Slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. 
and prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. <laughs> Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. So it's a beautiful zoo. Yeah, they always gotta start you off at a place that's like super nice so uh -huh. that you can feel really crappy about yours when yeah. you start. I was just kind of playing around with it, but I mean, their habitats are significantly better than the one I designed. Kind of feel bad for my grizzly. Yeah, these are like, this is a legit zoo. Yeah, this is beautiful. I don't, don't want to zoom in too much because I think it'll start the, the next mission here if we go into certain areas. Look at that, wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's go and locate the grizzly bear habitats. It's this one highlighted over here. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera from inside its information panel? So if y'all didn't know, which if you've been on the channel for a while, you probably do know, bears are my favorite animals, particularly Grizzly bears. Like, how did the game know? They They're the greatest. You to go look at it first. Like, we know you're only here for the bears. Only here for the bears. Got Zachary. Zachary the bear. He's a big old boy. Mm hmm. Yeah, he is. He got a big old belly. <laughs> <laughs> They've been feeding him quite well. Just looking at all the stats and stuff, guys. Look at his enrichment tier. It's all, uh, you know, real good, which you'd expect from the. A little tutorial zoo. Just waiting for him to do something. He's going to take a nap. <laughs> 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 the way they sit down is funny. They're going to talk about their day. So this is a small bear. What? <laughs> yeah, he's a 33% on size. Oh, wow. So a very small bear. For a grizzly, I suppose. Very tired Poor grizzly. little feller. He sleeps on his arm. Like me. I'm trying to select this bear. So this is Mika. So her size. Just take a look. I assume she seems a little bit bigger. Yeah, her size is 50%. I don't know. She might actually be smaller, but uh, maybe that's considering for a female. All right. So we need to select the grizzly bear animal camera, which is down here. <laughs> Not much to see. Just a lot of bear butt. Fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. Okay, so the bears are sleeping today, guys. Not much going on. All right, so let's go and locate the West African lion habitat. Panthera Leo Leo, or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride, although prides of that size are pretty rare. 
As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Parents are sleeping and that young one is plotting, <laughs> waking them up. I've seen that look. Like those friggin' wolves. Yeah. Just howling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that we're in that time of day where all the animals are sleeping, guys. Except for the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> They're wide awake. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the little cubs as well. Is there any other lions in here? Oh, look at the oh. little zebra <laughs> to attack. Ravage them. Is that made out of cardboard boxes? It's got some lights over here. Very beautiful looking habitat. Take note. Yeah, I'm trying to like learn how they did all this. Like soak it all in. Just stacking some rocks. Yeah, the rock stuff. stacking in particular looks really good. Oh, one of the lions is finally uh, getting up here. Baby's begging for food. Okay, so this is kind of cool. Like, it's a uh, kind of like a one-way oh, window, so they can't cool. see him as well. You know, it's not as uh, it's much more difficult to see from this side. You can still see the the kids hopping around there though. Yeah, but but the view over here is absolutely have to clear. Like walk up to the window. Yeah. To be looking at the people. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby oh. lions are a menace to their parents. That was kind of cool when it went under there. Mm hmm I mean, from what we've seen so far, it seems like the animations are much better in this game than they were in the Jurassic World game. Yeah, much more fluid. Mm-hmm. Whoa. I could just watch these animals yeah. all day. I know. It's going to be a lot of squealing. <laughs> Adorable critters. But yeah, much more fluid, especially when they're interacting with each other. They don't, like, line up as much yeah, as they to used to. Yeah, they get in the right spot. Now, that was one of my issues with Jurassic World is, is they didn't seem to interact with each other as much as you'd want them to. Except for, like, the fighting. They did do a lot of fighting. But even then, they'd have to, like, line up before they could do it. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. Okay, so we're going to adopt our first animals. There we are. A pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just select them and choose Adopt. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. <laughs> the last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. <laughs> so we see all their stats in here. You know, their size, fertility, all that kind of good stuff. Also, their coloring. And then from here, we can adopt, favorite them, compare them with other mates. But I'm guessing you have to have already have a another warthog to do that. And then this is the Zoopedia. So you get information about this particular animal. Okay. So it's gonna get these two animals adopted. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? So I believe there's a way to move both of them at the same time. So I think we have to L2. Okay, and then send a boat to the zoo. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. 
Right, let's get the warthog's habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Okay, so these are our two pigs. We're all in the dirt. <laughs> one of them's named Uba. What was the other one? Amalara. So I remember in Jurassic World, you'd want to set these up. You know, close to viewing areas. So they'd go over there. And then you'd be able to see them. So we'll get the water bowl and the food trough placed in this area. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare. Specifically their toy enrichment welfare. This is a big old mud bath. As for mud rats. Nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. So I'm hoping they go over to this new mud that I would just put in there. We just spent all that money on you, Peggy's. Come on. I know you're excited to use it. Go check it out. Uh, he's he's exploring. Dipping his he's a little curious. He's like, oh, come he's on in, in. It, but the mud is nice. <laughs> I don't know if he's actually going to use it. Look at he's just walking through. Oh, wait, there's food. There's food. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they're going to get him fed. And we could just race through this, this tutorial, guys, but... I feel like this is kind of part of the game. You're getting We're here for the critters. Here for the animals, yeah. Oh, well, here she comes. Is, is that one's the, the female, right? No, that's the male. Okay. I was thinking the the black one was the the male. All right, so this is the male Uba, and they are loud. And here's the female. Uba. <laughs> that's his name. Damn, they're like killing that food. The sound effects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so they were oh, quite wow. hungry. They My ate goodness. it all right away. They weren't healthy. They were starving. Looking for more. We're going to speed this up just a little bit. Now they need a nap. Yeah. You nope, know the that's... natural order of things. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see them get into the, to the mud, guys. So, of course, the male comes in the mud first. But still not rolling around that. These these pigs don't know. He's like, it's a bit too dirty. How the mud works. Anyways, so uh, we need to locate a highlighted area. Right here. So I think we're working with ostriches now. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause time for a moment. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Okay, so we're going to go for a curved section here. So we got the, the gate already. Right. 
Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. So yeah, now we're gonna add the uh, the walls in. Try and make this look somewhat okay. It's beautiful. And I don't think we need the curved sections anymore now. So let's go straight down here. And now I'm gonna get some criticism from how straight or you know lacking of straightness <laughs> <laughs> my walls are. I'm trying to get this to connect here. Come on, there okay, we go. Yeah, yeah. Just right. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Do we just select it and say, like, this is what we want to be the glass barrier? There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on, because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Okay, so we'll place this. You gonna put it right here? No, I think it's gotta, it's gotta be, be closer. On the wall. Yeah, it's gotta be closer to the walkway. Okay, so I think having it on the corner is nice. Because, you know, you got people coming, you yeah, know, wrapping around this. Ostriches, you should end pause time. After all, if time's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches. <laughs> okay, so I didn't want to just have the one window. I don't know if they'll let me do another one at the time. Oh, we were blocked. Way, as well as pausing time, you can also speed it up. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. <laughs> All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. Okay, so these are the four that we're adopting. The only four that are available. Let's go and get them all selected and then send them to the zoo. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals. Will they let me add more windows? No, they will not. So they have to be over here, basically. But yeah, if we had full control, which remember we are very much in the tutorial, guys. But if we had full control, we'd probably put uh, glass on this side as well. Everywhere. Well, not on this side, because these are the um, staff. The staff roads. Oh, true. They don't need to see the animals. Yeah, I mean, they go in there with them, so. I would say maybe you could do one over here. I don't know how well that would work, though, since it's uh, yeah, a curve. So maybe one right here. And certainly a couple on this side. But again, not really an option, so. We better get this food here. So that's yeah, the water I trough. Like that's something you would do before you introduce the animals to the habitat. Well, she did tell us to do it while we were while we were waiting, but I was talking. So. <laughs> Oh, that's the slow feeder. Okay, so we can put like a large food bowl right here, and I'm just trying to put it all next to since we only have one window, guys. We're just putting it all right here, and let's go and just rotate this. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> oh, 
Well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? <laughs> Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. So this is the male. Oh, is it playing with a beach ball? Because he's the prettiest of all the birds. I feel like I've never seen an ostrich's butt before. Because I don't remember them having tails like that. Do the females have tails like that? They have the little brown nubbies. Let's take a look here. They certainly don't. It doesn't stand out as much. Oh, yeah, I guess they do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I haven't seen an ostrich's tail or never really paid attention. Look at that one go. She's fast. She's like, I got places to be. So this male has three ladies. I guess if you put two males in there, they might be. <laughs> and start fighting. Yeah, start fighting. All right, so the ostriches are pretty cool. So they want us to place a keeper hut over here. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So we can do a small one. They're both small, but the question is, do you want a classic one or the Planet Zoo one? We'll just take a look and see. Take the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. Okay, so I'm stuck in some kind of weird view there. All right, so this is the Planet Zoo one. I like that one. That one's nice. It's very sleek and modern. Let's take a look at the other option. Oops, not that one. The classic. The classic does have the same brick as the uh, their pen here does. That's true. It fits in. So it fits in a little bit better. This color scheme. Can't get it just right. Maybe you put it off in the corner or something. Have it off to like a off to the side like that. Hide it behind a nice bush. Said it's an invalid rotation. You're invalid. <laughs> they don't like that. Jesus, this wolves. <laughs> this keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Alright, so this is where they prepare all the food. I didn't know you could go in there. Yeah, Jinx, Jinx played a little bit before this. We were actually going to have her play the game rather than me because she's, again, very excited for the game. And we tried doing a little bit of that. But I am not a smooth camera lady. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it, didn't go, it didn't go well. It our would first. not have been a cinematic. <laughs> I don't know, minor cin cinematic, but... It wouldn't have been cinematic at all. <laughs> Yeah, we decided to, to redo it, and, and I, I was going to play instead. Lovely work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food, and thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective, then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. All right, so we're going to be getting ourselves some tigers, guys. And... I guess they want us to start with the habitat gate, but I don't know if that's the best way to do it. 
Yeah. I kind of feel like you should build the fence. Build the fence first. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and build out the fence first. Do you want to stay with the brick that we've been using? Is that what everything in this area is? Kind of want it to fit with the rest I of. I think so. You got brick right over there, so it makes sense to. Yeah. Yeah, brick over here as well. So we'll st we'll stick with the red brick, guys. So that it's all uh, you know all blends in, and fits fits well. All right. So nope, we don't want it there. Luckily, they do have an undo button, so that's very helpful. You just uh, hold square and uh, press the left on the threshold pad to undo. The right will redo. Down pauses, and then you fast forward or speed it up. Change the speed of it by pressing up. Then the R one to L one. I think that's for like weather and stuff like that. Change the time of day. All right, so let's go ahead and start. I guess we'll start on this corner here. And we'll go with the straight ones for now. Maybe add some some curves a little bit later. Do we want this to be a little bit longer? Ah, I guess it's fine. We can just do a bunch of them. I do like having those pillars in there. They look nice. They do look nice. You put like a lamp on top of them. A lamp? Yeah. So that the animals can see. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Tigers can see very well in the dark. Okay, well, you don't want them <laughs> reading in the dark. <laughs> oh, what do we get a trophy for? Attain a five-star status animal. Ooh, who's this? Which star? one's that? Okay, so I don't know that we can do this with this current length, guys. We're gonna need to turn this down a little bit. Down to like five meters. And then we're gonna do a curve one. Let me go back up to ten meters. And then get a curb section. Something like something like that, I don't know. Maybe I should do the other side how I want it. And then have it meet. Yeah, and then have it meet. That might be the better way to do it. So yeah, we'll stick with the straight sections for now, and then we'll try and curve it. It's probably gonna look terrible, guys. It'll be amazing. We'll do what we can. Trying to add a little bit of grass on the side there. Okay, so yeah, this is, you're gonna want it to curve like right around there. Maybe you don't need a long curve. What like this? Let's go five and then do like a slight curve. Ever so slight. Something like that. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. It works, it's fine. All right, so we'll go ahead and finish this out along this side. We want to increase the length again. And then as for the, the gate, should probably put it on one of these staff paths. That's what I'm thinking. And we're gonna have to decrease the size again. Do like a five meter one here. And go up around this rocky area. Like, I know we were saying we don't want windows on the worker paths, but you would think they would need to see inside there. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, so they can keep a proper eye on them. At mm. least by the gate. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so. I guess this is the staff path, and so it makes sense. To have the gate be over here. Mm hmm So I guess that's another reason to, to wait. Probably don't want it by the tree, though. I feel like the tiger just come out of nowhere. It would. And get you. Yeah, I think it should be, like, here in the middle. <laughs> where they can... You can see they got the... They have a window on the gate. Now, Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos. So we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, let's select the habitat barrier and then jump into barrier editing mode. So you got a good view before you walk in, although that tiger will be hiding right in that grass. All right, so we need to set the boundary to the height of these. This is something I don't know how to do. So we gotta edit the barrier. And hold hmm. next 
multi select. Yeah, we should probably select everything. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of your barriers using the barrier height tool. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. Hmm. So this is the height snap. That's clearly not what we're trying to do here. Because yeah, it wants it to be uh, 3.7. This only lets you get up to two. I'm guessing you're adjusting it so they're all the same. Hold to edit height. Hmm. Yeah, I'm holding square, because that's what it says. Hold square to edit height. Oh, okay. It's getting bigger. I see. So then you go up. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Okay, so now the walls are much higher, so that... Hopefully they can't jump out. I think it could jump right out. Yeah, I feel like a tiger would get out of that. Have these people ever seen a cat jump? Okay, so now we need to place a donation box, but we don't have the windows yet. She didn't even say anything about me not having windows. She's like, it's fine. Nobody needs to see the animals. <laughs> so we need to go ahead and add the glass in here. So I'm guessing this side will... We want to certainly have glass on this side. You know how many times we've gone to the zoo and not seen a lot of animals? That is not the one I added. That's a glass. There we go. Alright, then maybe another... Another glass one... Right here? There we go. And then maybe on this side as well. Yeah, we'll do one right here. Nope, that one. <laughs> Oh my lord. Jeez, that feels more difficult than it should be. Alright, so we've got the, the windows in there. Do you think this whole thing should be windows? I think there should be windows on the corner. You think so? Yeah. Like on this really small corner? Yeah. Okay. You put a winder there. A winder. A winder? <laughs> put a winder there. You gonna wash it? Nah, it just won't even let you do this here. But either way, it's still kind of difficult. Yeah, we got have windows all the way across the side. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure why they don't want the window right there, though. Maybe because it's just real tiny. Does it have to do with those lines? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that could be the issue. All right, so this is our area, and so I think we should have the donation box be where we got the, the big windows. Or we got, like, three of them right next to them. You need three donation boxes. <laughs> I think one will do the trick, Jinx. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. So is this going to be like a little pond for them? Yeah, they didn't tell us how to put the water in. Maybe we just haven't done that yet, but you'd think you'd do that before you put the tigers in. Or maybe it's just supposed to be a dirt pit. Maybe they're going to sleep there, I don't know. Alright, so let's go ahead. like... Women. I mean, yeah. I just... I don't know why you put the water in after. So we're going to get two Bengal tigers. One female and one male. What's his name? Chakradev? Chakradev? That's a cool Something name. Like that. And Ayla. It's a nice name, too. He's uh, a smaller... A smaller tiger. And they were seized in by customs. Somebody's trying to sneak the tigers in. Aww. Alright, so we're going to adopt both of these. Kind of expensive, but I guess tigers would be. She's a gold standard for tigers. So let's going to get both of these selected. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. Okay, so we are going to be making a lake, Jinx. I thought so. I feel like this is where you ask them to donate, right where they watch the tiger eat. Like, do you see how this expensive time, this instead is? Instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. 
There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. Okay, so you can do calm water, rough water, or select the water. Yeah, so we're going to do a calm water, I assume. Valid. I guess I wonder how it works. Do you just like... Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? There, so they're exploring it, thinking about it, thinking about getting wet. Maybe just yeah, getting a sip. It. It's hot in that box. Mm hmm. There's some pretty tigers, though. Play. Well, we gotta give them some toys. They have no enrichment. All right, so let's go ahead and start with that. All right, I guess we need to do the food enrichment first. A blood pumpkin. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right, so I guess we're gonna put the blood pumpkin right around here somewhere. In front of the children. Yeah, we'll put it right here. And then we need the toy enrichment as well. So this is a rubbing pad. I put this up here. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. All right, so we're just going to use the blueprint. Well, this thing is massive. These are spoiled tigers. So I probably don't want this towards the back, I guess. As they did say it was for them to avoid the, the guest. Don't it is difficult to door. get it just... Oh, yeah, the door is right there. Oh, you probably don't want that right here, huh? There's not really nowhere else, though. Yeah. You get smack dab in the middle. I'll put it right here. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could put it right there. Seems like it should go up against a wall, but... But then they can use it to escape. They'll jump up onto the roof and then ramp out of there. <laughs> That's true. They could. Could put it right here, I guess. Trying to get it like... Oh, I guess it's going to look weird no matter what I do, huh? I yeah, worked right in here. an animal shelter where there was a Jack Russell Terrier who would climb the fence to get on top of the oh, roof. Poor dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Look at that big pile of meat, man. Look at it just like rubbing its face on. It's like, this <laughs> is great. This is the greatest. All right, so we need to select one of the tigers Alexio. here. Head over to the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Okay, so you can see that they want they want more soil, so that's what we need to do. This is a pretty wide thing here. We can decrease the side size or increase it. I guess we'll go with a two point five. That's fine. Does and where it should we? What kind of soil? You know, I'm not entirely sure. I guess we do light. Where Maybe should we put the soil? <laughs> And I'm guessing they Does have to come. To scoop that? Yeah, they gotta come clean that up. Oh, Those are some massive logs. Throw some dirt on it. Alright, so I guess we'll go ahead and add soil up around here. Seems like it'd be around the little lake area. So I'm just adding a bit of soil throughout here. Alright, we are good on soil. Are we? Now I think we can add more. I think we're trying to get rid of the grass. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, that the grass sense. is a little bit too, they just too want high. Dirt everywhere. Apparently, yeah. Weirdos. 
So we're going to go ahead and just add soil. Because the soil can be all the way up. Have you seen that meter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could have this whole place be soil practically, and I guess they'd be fine with that. But yeah, they do not like the amount of long grass. Which is surprising. Man. You'd think they'd want to like, hide in it. Yeah. Maybe it stresses them out. They don't know what's in the long grass. Or one of them keeps hiding in the grass to scare the other. <laughs> I kind of like the long grass better, though. The, the I what. do, too. But hey, tiger knows what it wants, I guess. Yeah, who are we to say? I guess we can put the soil over here. If they like it so much, they can lay in it. Yeah, you gotta get rid of like all this long grass. I guess it'd be good to get rid of it over here in the front. True. We so are worried. Can't be sneaking up on the workers. Yeah, we're worried about our workers. Right then, all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the environment tab. All right, so again, I had to redo things bit different to get it just right and yeah I do remember this being kind of a little bit of a pain trying to get it all right exactly how the animal liked it but we got it all on the green now this is how it looks I am I'm trying to improve it some just as far as like looks go just to pretty it up yeah because we could do a little bit better here guys so it's not just a dirt patch yeah with the green carpet so yeah, we're just gonna improve it with the long grass. Just kinda put some of this in there. Don't wanna get the long grass too high, but we're okay for right now. Just yeah, kinda pretty it up a little bit. Let's add like a little bit of green over here. Looks a lot better. Yeah. Happy mistakes. Okay, all right, yeah, that didn't look too bad. All right, so now we need to work on the plants. No. As you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get rid of everything they don't like. If it's red, she says you don't have to, but... They really don't like it. We'll get rid of it. A bunch of divas. It seems like it's going to be pretty plain here. Oh, look at that tiger sleeping. So yeah, we're going to have to fill it in now with uh, some different plants. So they want tropical and uh, tropical and temperate biome plants from Asia. So the way we'll do this is we'll go in through the plants and the filters. Select temperate and tropical. And then continent Asia. And that should be good. This should be all ones that they'll like. So like a banana palm. I like banana palms. We'll put one of these over here in the sand. Maybe another one right there. $30 for that tree? That is so cheap. Are these ones a little bit different? Yeah. I love just walking around nurseries looking at plants I can't afford. Put a couple of these in here. Whoa. It's beautiful. Some camera problems here. So get those placed. They approve, I think. They're like, I love leaves. I'm gonna well, go sniff it. They're Bengal tigers, so probably should put some Bengal bamboos. Oh, yeah, this looks great right here. Tiger's gonna use that to his advantage <laughs> to escape. So we're gonna put some of these in here. I'm just trying to get it all up to 90%. Oh, these ones are even taller. Oh, wow, look at this. There's a massive one. We'll just put one of those in there. Wait, you're not even going to be able to see the tiger. <laughs> They're all over here. Oh, true. Yeah, you can't even need to see them that way anyways. They got to have some area. Oh, these are like strips. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. I think I'm put one back here, I guess. Cover the wall. So 
something like that. Let's just rotate this just a little bit. That's beautiful. Let's see what else we got here. Bird's nest, fern, large. Yeah, we can play some of these around. That ain't that big. Kind of just replacing... Oh, there's one of those right For there. $20, so that's a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's swimming. Oh, I thought there was a gator in there. We're missing it swimming, Jinx. Little kitty paddle. I like how the fur I actually looks say. wet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, right, so back to placing plants. Kind of placing these all over the place. Just trying to get that 90% uh, here with our little sticklers for fashion. Does it not show you how much? What we're at currently? Yeah, without actually being on the animal. I don't know. I don't think so. So trying to give them like a little clear path to go into the water here. We might have to take a look at it. I feel like I placed a lot of stuff over here. That's a cool tree. Yeah, we can put this in here. I got a little open spot here. Put it right here. Don't exactly all blend together, I suppose, <laughs> but... They're tigers. What do they know about gardening? <laughs> and we got another coconut palm. Elephant ear plants. Look a lot like the plants we've already placed everywhere. Elm tree. Oh, I'm going to place that. I don't think that... That, that just really doesn't fit. It really with doesn't. With what we already have it here. Clashes. Yeah. Same with that. So let's take a look at these tigers. I was going to say, what do you want, cat? And see where we're at currently. Because clearly they're still not happy. Animal requires more plant and tree coverage. We're nowhere near what they want. Well, they do want the big old trees, don't they? Well, I guess we're close to what they want it to be at. Okay, so if we just place... I would like to poop in private, please. Can you put a little row of bushes here? <laughs> I guess it's because you got all this open space here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the problem. So let's go ahead and spread them out. I put them. I focus like exclusively on our little lake here. Uh, we can get a bit more uh, plants in this area, though. I didn't realize how much has removed after we moved all those uh, those plants that didn't fit. So I might put. I feel like they need something over here. So maybe that. Or some more. Oh, we'll do this one right here. They say that good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. And I didn't even get to finish. I felt like they needed a little bit more over here. But it's fine, guys. Alright, so now they want us to move over to this area. Now then, just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. Expand their social welfare, and we can get a bit more detail. Right, as you can see, the peafowls need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market, then. Okay, so that's interesting. So you can exa get an exact breakdown of this. So you see that they don't have enough plants here. Now they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Head over to the social tab to see what's wrong. I feel like we already did that. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna be adopting, do they say all three of these? That's probably exactly what they want us to do. So let's gonna adopt all three of them. It's like, I'll take them, I guess. 
good work on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> in the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Okay, so that makes sense. Doesn't have anywhere. So, you know, get away from the, the crowns. So we'll fool it. Trick it. <laughs> Think that it's away from the crowns. Like, when it's here. not. Alright, so we want to... This will probably be the last thing we'll do as well. I, I believe we can just save right in the middle of the mission here. I was hoping we could finish the first mission. It looked like we had, because it unlocked the next, uh, the next story mission. Which was that monkey one. Or apes, I think is it, it said something about apes. So we're doing a one-way glass here. Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's, it's too hot. <laughs> Even with the terrible British weather, you should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. I suppose we'll finish a snow leopard. Their objectives over here. All right, so this is the heat map. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. It's oh, I was about to say it's cold and snowy. But... It's supposed to be cold and snowy. They're saying it's too hot. So it says we need to turn on the temperatures. Okay, so L1 and R1 is how we move over here. See, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. Okay, so now this makes a lot more sense, now that we're actually in the temperature view here. Okay, so yeah, we need to place the coolers so that uh, more of the habitat looks like this. So they want uh, three coolers added total. And they're already selected for us, so we're just going to spread these out. We probably want... Might not need one in here, because it's not as hot. But maybe put one right here. And then one back here somewhere. And then... I don't know. One more right here. <laughs> you can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters. But now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopard's terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock. So let's make that happen. Great. We get to modify terrain again. <laughs> it's always it's your favorite. really exciting, guys. It either turns out really good or really, really bad. <laughs> but usually really bad. All right, so we're going to put some snow all throughout here. What'd she say? It was snow and rock or something like that? Shit, I don't know what she said. We can look at, at the critter. So we got snow through throughout here. I guess we'll put it like all the way. Do you like snow, kitty? Put it all through the back here. I wonder how you keep the snow from just melting. I mean, the coolers, I guess, help, but... Yeah, we'll take a look and see what the other... I think it was a rock. I feel like that's what it was. But we'll just double check on that. What is its name? Oh, is that its name? Yeah. <laughs> you can change the name of the critters, guys. Wow. I, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce Ilenia that. Yeah, gun, sitzig. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Yuli. <laughs> All right, so you could pretty much cover this whole place with snow and it wouldn't care. It wants to get rid of the long grass, though. It's like, I don't like it. I've got allergies. And put rock in there instead. So There's we can do that. bugs in there. It's just really kind of icky. 
So let's get more rocks. In fact, let's just put the rocks back here. And then, all of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should head to the animal section of the zoo management screen. All right, so we haven't looked at this yet. These are all our information screens. So you get lots of graphs, you can get loans if you need money. You can hest all your, your funds away. So you take a look at all your animals. Staff overview, you can change your uniforms. Take a look at their staff rooms, work zones. Do research, so it does have research similar to the Jurassic World game. Can you rename your staff to? I don't know, I mean that would be kind of weird if you could. Like, here's your name tag. I don't care if you like it. Okay, so let's go to the animal overview. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate tool. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. Is there a way to sort this by their, uh, their issues? Perhaps not, you could just probably go through it all, but the, it seems the elephants have no enrichment. They have no reason to live. No fun, no enjoyment. Poor feller. You've got and a child that you didn't want elephants. for. Alright, so we need to satisfy their enrichment. So they don't have food enrichment and they don't have toy enrichment. So this is probably something we'll have to pick up for the next episode. Because we've got a lot of animals that need to be taken care of. Though it doesn't have to be perfect. We just gotta get it from 82% to 90%. I think that'll take some time. Especially if we spend, oh geez. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a big old pile. But yeah, especially if we spend so much time watching our animals as we generally do, so. I think it'll take us a little while to, to get that enrichment up. I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so. And this episode's already, uh, gone long enough. Man, I'm, I'm liking the game so far. There's some issues with the controls. It, it's not bad for the, the controller. You know, this developer has experience, you know, adapting their games to the console controllers. And it does control much like the Jurassic World games in many ways. Obviously, there's different mechanics and stuff. Well, he's just all up in there. She's just all up in there with this lion. Yeah, that's a little concerning. I like best as friends, Jinx. I don't think so. I think he wants a snack. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's not bad for the controls so far. It takes a little getting used to, but overall, not bad. Probably a little easier to play on PC. Oh, we got giraffes and zebras up in here. We didn't even take a look oh, at this wow. area. I saw the zebras, but I did not see the giraffes. They're massive. Wonder if you can if they can feed them here. We've had giraffes at a zoo once. A long, long time ago. A long ago. time ago, yeah. Our daughter got to feed them. I mean, I'm sure there's <laughs> several other areas we haven't haven't looked at yet. You can tell the the habitats that I've worked on. <laughs> you can't tell at all. <laughs> they're not quite as good as yeah <laughs> the tiger. i gotta <laughs> fix this one maybe we'll fix that next episode although their ostrich habit habitat's not great either though no and there's four of them Mhm. Mm what's in the water here i'm not seeing anything i was thinking maybe gators or something i'm not seeing anything what's in this area probably gators where is the critter i don't know i'm looking Ah, oh, yes, the critter. Maybe there's nothing in here. <laughs> oh, it's hippos. That would make sense. Yeah, they would need all that water. So the final thing I would like to note is that if you're in the United States and you're having trouble playing the game, doing anything that requires you to open up... Uh, let's see if we can edit something. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. So let's say we go into the barriers of this location. 
And we want to, well, let's just select that actually and go to edit barrier. And you'll see all these different uh, settings where you can change the length and you can change the height and all that kind of stuff. If you're having issues with that and it's not working, like the whatever you set it to, you see no adjustments. Uh, so well, one of the uh, one of the tutorial missions required us to adjust the height of the tiger pen. If you can't do that effectively, it's because you need to change your settings back from feet to meters. So if we looked in here, we have changed everything to fit with the uh, you know. How we Americans are familiar with it. Where is it? I think it's in here. So we've got, I think it starts miles per hour, but we've turned it from Celsius to Fahrenheit and from kilos to pounds. Which hopefully none of that causes any issues. Yeah, we had this set to feet and it was not working. Uh, all the all those menus were broken. And so it, it turns out if you change this back to meters, that will fix it. And we haven't had any issues with it since. So if you're an American and, and you change it to feet, then you need to change it back because it doesn't seem to work properly uh, with the controller. Yeah, they don't do that. Yeah. I'm not going to whip out their calculator for you. We got our train going through here. Yeah, it's a beautiful zoo they have us working in here. I'm sure mine will look nothing like this. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this first episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next episode, check out the front page of our channel. We've got tons of videos all sort sorted by genre. We do play a wide variety of management style games, strategy games, uh, simulators, as well as other games that are much different. You know, multiplayer, action games, RPGs, pretty much anything that looks fun, we'll check it out. I like watching these giraffe feet here. I was like, is that broccoli or just <laughs> heads of lettuce? Well, it looks like it's just, lettuce. it looks like leaves to me. It's got attached to branches. Well, if you're looking for any links, check out the description to any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. We also have links to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, fun links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. So I do hope to see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.